Hey guys, what's up? It's Alec Torelli and welcome back to Conscious Poker and this very special hand of the day. Today's hand of the day comes from a really fun, interesting hand I played on CryptoCorn, which is the first ever poker site that allows you to play poker and win blue chip NFTs. The premise is that you purchase an NFT from the CryptoCorn marketplace and that is basically your access. It's your membership access to the CryptoCorn poker site where you play in tournaments and you win blue chip NFTs like Bored Apes, uh, v friends, cool cats, etc. So we are doing our, there's a full video about crypto corn right up here where you can get a better idea of how it works. But it is the alpha testing period for crypto corn. So the site just launched and we're doing a round of alpha testing where uh, different tribes get to play and compete against each other to win NFTs. Uh, it's all free and it's very fun to join. And uh, so I, I got the chance to play on the site and I had this really interesting hand that I wanted to share with you. Uh, very, very actually sick spot. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment below with how you would play it. So this hand kicks off. There's 100, 200 blinds. It's a cash game format. And I'm in the big blind with Jack-10 offsuit. Now, naturally, when you're playing in these games... Uh, for play money, it, it plays a little bit like, people take it seriously because people are you know, bantering in chat and we're all chatting in Discord together and people genuinely wanna win. But uh, it plays a little bit more how you would imagine a home game to play. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the strategy here in a hand like this. So we have a limp from uh, under the gun, a limp from second position, and a limp in mid position, a limp in the cutoff, the small blind completes, I'm in the big blind with Jack-10 offsuit, and I think I have a pretty clear check here. Um, so I just check and we go, a million ways to the flop. The flop comes down 995 nine, with two diamonds. I have jack 10 with, with no diamonds, so my plan here is just to check fold. Um, one interesting thing to note, a little bit higher level of a thought process here, is that the nine of diamonds and the nine of clubs are on the board, and I have the jack of spades and the ten of hearts. So that really makes it a lot less likely that someone has a suited nine, because the, the nine of clubs, the nine of diamonds are on the board. I block 10, nine of, uh, 10, nine and Jack nine of spades and hearts. So it's just really unlikely that someone has a suited nine here. And that's just something to kind of think about as this hand progresses. So the flop gets checked around, nothing too exciting here. The turn comes at eight of clubs, bringing a backdoor flush draw. I check again, uh, and the second limper bets 900 and the cutoff now calls. So in this situation, I'm thinking it's pretty unlikely someone has a nine. Like I think if you have a nine here in a multi-way pot, most people are gonna bet this board, especially the cutoff. Like it's really unlikely that the cutoff checked the flop with a nine and then he just calls the turn. If he had a nine, he'd probably bet the flop or raise. And I feel kind of the same way about the under the gun, the, the mid position limper. Like if he has a nine, he's probably gonna bet the flop. He, he maybe, maybe he turned something like six, seven, uh, you know, there's only four, six, seven suited combo, so it's pretty unlikely. I feel like a lot of times they're going to have a draw here or an eight, and a big check raise is going to get them to fold. This is a really great play you want to have in your arsenal when you block a lot of the nine X combos, and you could represent here in the big line. Look, I'm in the big line. I could have any nine. I could have six, seven, any offsuit six, seven combo. There's a lot more six, sevens in my range than there are in the villains range. I could have king nine offsuit. I could have all these types of hands that I'm playing for value. So I make a very big raise here to 5,000, and I think that's important in in spots like these where if you're going to try and represent a narrow range you're going to try and represent a very strong hand you want to apply a lot of pressure and make a big raise to get your opponents to fold a weak made hand or a draw i make it 5,000, and the limper calls the cutoff folds we go heads up to the river now the river is where things get really interesting it's a queen of clubs bringing the backdoor flush draw so at this point here if i'm betting this river i'm almost over representing my hand right i i check raise the turn and i'm betting the river when the club gets there i'm pretty much representing a flush or a full house so when i bet here with a straight the only thing i'm getting value from is trip nines but it's i'm representing all hands that beat trip nines i'm representing like you know maybe nine five nine eight uh queen nine or a flush right if i was bluffing on the turn i probably had a flush draw and now i hit a flush so i feel like in this spot um i think it's a better play potentially just to check call if your opponent's weak and he's a station um you can maybe go for a bet here and just bet like you know four thousand into twelve thousand and hope that a nine makes a crying call but again i don't really think he has a nine here um based on how he played the hand maybe he hasn't maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe he like 
you know, slow played a nine and then called the turn and now he has a nine. But I think it's it's a little bit more likely that he has some draw. So I'm actually kind of concerned about this river. Um, so I go ahead and check and now he goes all in here. So he bets 1.5 times the pot. And I'm like, damn, he jams in this spot. Like what hands is he really bluffing with? Is he bluffing? Number one. And is he jamming with a worse hand for value? It's really hard that he's actually going all in here with a nine for value. I mean, why would he do that? What's he hoping to get called with, right? And it's also hard that he's bluffing. Like, he bet the turn and called a 5,000 check raise, which is a big raise. What bluffs does he have? You know, so I'm now I'm thinking at this point, he, maybe he has queen nine. Maybe he has eights full and he just turned it. Maybe he slow played fives full on the flop. But it's really hard for him to be bluffing. And it's really hard for me to imagine he's value betting a worse hand. Like, is he really going to jam with six, seven here that slow played the turn? And now it's jamming when there's a higher straight and there's a flush possibility on the river it's just hard for me to imagine a hand here that he's jamming here so uh leave your thoughts in a comment below how would you play it also if you want more awesome content from this channel be sure to subscribe i'm dropping uh a bit of poker quite a bit of poker content i have coming up in the pipeline um so i'm really excited to share with you some awesome never before seen hands that i've played uh, from some high stakes games around the world so be sure to subscribe for that um but in the end i tanked it was a turbo table, so I didn't really have that much time to tank. I had like 10 seconds. But uh, I ultimately folded, and uh, I asked him what he had after the hand. He said he had a straight, but I don't know if I believe it. He might have been throwing me a curveball, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, for more info, to join me on CryptoCorn and uh, to mint an NFT to learn more about the project, head over to CryptoCorn.io and come play poker with me. Join our Discord. It's an awesome community. I'm excited to get to know you uh, through the platform as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Alec Torelli. I'll see you in the next one.